today words is your words are seeds of your destiny the words that you you speak are seeds of your destiny in recent days God has guided me to draw the church's attention to the word that comes out of our mouth God has said challenge my people to be careful how they are using their mouth why? because Jesus said that our mouth speaks what the heart is full of Jesus said that your mouth speak what your heart is full of and our words are seeds that you are planting as the word of God are seed that enter inside of us also your words are seeds that you are sowing and planting and our words we always produce life or death don't get distracted please okay don't get distracted don't look around but our words we always produce something there is no words that you speak that you are not going to have any results your words will produce that left life and death blessing or curse are you with me I know you are looking around <laughs> okay I'm gonna wait for you okay are you with me okay how is our words you're going to produce something left death and life blessing and curse healing and sickness these are the these are seeds that will inevitably bear fruit all your words will bear fruit and I have observed and heard Christians who although they pray and worship on Sundays when they speak they use their words improperly they are here on Sunday worshiping God using their mouth to bless God and to give glory to God but during the week they are using their mouth to curse their brother their sister their family He's speaking ad idle words there are some that even today speak bad words and I spoke last Sunday that your words and your faith should walk together your words and your faith what you believe in your heart you have to speak and today message is, is going to be based on the book of James how many of you have read the book of James hmm? I love this book <laughs> the book of James because it speaks a lot about what what we speak and if you don't know James, James is is actually the half brother of Jesus did you know that yeah James is the half brother of Jesus same mother different father James as Jesus brother had uh, the unique opportunity to observe to observe his brother growing up he on many occasions James he observed Jesus speech on the what he said and the way he said he was always observing Jesus 
Also James listened Jesus when Jesus was provoked by the religious. How Jesus spoke. When Jesus spoke when he was tired after a long day of work and he got home and they came to him and how he spoke. And James noticed that Jesus' tongue was always under control. And now we are going to read, having that in mind, that Jesus' brother watched every, Jesus. And now let's see what he wrote about our tongue and our words. James 3, 1 and 2. We're going to read more verse. But now we're going to and we go reading and talking about the, all this verse. My brethren... Follow me, please, if you want to read it with me. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we always stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is what? Perfect man. Able also to bridle the whole body. Then James said, Jesus' brother said, the one who controls his tongue is what? Perfect man. Perfect means mature. Keep that in mind. Perfect means mature. The, the, the real translation from, from Greek is mature. Okay? Then he says he is a mature and also to bride the whole body. Bride means to control. Bride means to control. Or a person that controls their tongue can control their body. Maturity is measured to a large degree by a person's ability to speak the right kind of words. Note what James said. The one who can control their tongue can control what? If you can control your tongue, you can control your whole body. Everything inside of you. Whole body means that they can control their appetites. If you have the control of your tongue, you can control your appetite. What to eat, how much you can eat. So no, yes. Because some people say, oh, I can't resist. Oh, no, I can't. When I see a bar of chocolate, I can't resist. Yeah, because you are saying. And is what are those who have the control of their tongue have the control of its desires. All your desires, if you control your tongue, your passions, your inclinations to sin and its weaknesses. Because James said, if you have the control of what you speak. And then you have control of your body. If your life is discontrolled, if you don't have the control of your life, it's because you don't have the control of your tongue. But in a few minutes, we're going to go deeply. Why? Because you're going to understand that your tongue speaks what your heart is full. And because of what you are accepting in your mind, this is what you are speaking. And then this is why you, many people, they are in church, but they have no control over their lives. The whole body can be controlled by someone who learns how to control their tongue. Let's read verse 3 to 5 now. 
Let's read it together. Indeed, we put bits in horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn their whole body. Look out to sh at ships, although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, whatever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts greater things. See how great a forest a little fire candles. Wow. Here, Jesus brought, he used some comparison to talk about you and your tongue. And he used here three different illustrations. The tongue is likened three different things. First, a bit in a horse's mouth. Second, a ruder in a large ship. And the third, to a flame that start a massive forest fire. Here you see a progression. Blood brothers, every time you are reading the Bible, you have to pay attention to the details. You are going to see a progression. He starts saying that what you speak is like first what? A horse. Second, a ship. In the third, fire in the forest. And you are going to see what? You are going to see one progression, one escalation. Why? Everything is written here, it's written to teach you. First, as a horse. Why? A horse can carry just only one person, right? One rider in a horse. This is what means, first, your tongue is going to destroy you first only. You are destroying yourself. But second, he compared your your life in your mouth as what? Ship. Or what he said, but in a ship there is not only one person. I was reading there are some cruiser that there are 6,000 people. Can you imagine a cruiser with 6,000 people and the pilot has no the control? How many people will die? Then this, this progression from a horse to a ship and to a, f a fire in the forest. In Brazil, this month, we had a, a lot of fire in the forests everywhere. In my hometown, everything's burned down. Why? five to six months with no rain and just one flame started but didn't destroy only the forest many people lost their lives in Brazil people lost their lives Pro properties big forest with a lot of animals that died Birds, everything destroyed. And this is what the James is saying. Because it escalates. If you don't take care of your words in the beginning, then it's going to escalate. In the beginning, just your life is going to be destroyed. But then you are going to start, to, and then you're going, if you don't correct your tongue and your voice, what are going to happen? People around you, your family, your marriage, your brothers and sisters are going to be affected by what you say. And many people are going to be destroyed. 
This is what the Bible taught us. Let's go back to when he said, James said that the tongue is likened a bit in a horse's mouth. Did you ride a horse? Have you ride a horse? Who here? And do you know, if you have the bit in, 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 in his mouth, what happened? You can control the horse, right? A person in a, in a horse, on a horse using the bit can control the horse, can make it stop, can make it turn to left, and can make it turn to the right. Because who has the control? The horse? The, the rider. You have the control of your body. But many people, they have no the control of their body. Why? Because of your mouth. And because not of only your mouth, but because of your beliefs. And there are many Christians, they believe in lies. And I'm going to speak in a few minutes because there are so many Christians, they have stronghold in their minds. They came to Christ, but this stronghold was not destroyed. In the same way, if we cannot control our tongue, we cannot control our body. What he said is, what James said is, if you control your tongue, your life will be in control. <laughs> if you control your tongue, all your life will be in control. Let's read verse 4. Again. Look also at ships. Although they are so large, they are driven by fierce winds or strong winds. They are turned by a very small rudder, whatever the pilot desires. We spoke about the horse. Just with the bit in his mouth, he obeyed. But here, a massive ship with hundreds of people or thousands of people, all ship has a wheel, a small wheel. And if you turn the wheel, what happened? You turn the rudder. When you turn the wheel, you turn the rudder. The pilot the only thing he does sometimes is just one hand. Let's turn to the other side. There are some rocks over there. Oops, just one hand. This is what James was talking about us. The ship responds to as the pilot move the wheel. And in the verse 4 he said that these large ships are driven by fierce winds. Lord brothers, these fierce winds is the same word used in the Gospels. When a demon would drive a demoniac into the wilderness. And you are going to, I have no time to go deeply into that. But you are going to see many times Jesus was rebooking the wind. Do you remember? This is what I'm saying to you. We always speak what we see. And you have to speak what you want. Jesus never spoke what he saw. He always spoke what he wanted. Always, but this is not what the Christians are say, are doing. They are speaking what they see. And and this, what means these fierce winds? 
This wind speaks of, of trials and troubles. It's a picture of someone whose life is being driven by strong demoniac forces into the rocks of wilderness, into the rocks of depression, divorce, despair, addiction, and defeat. And I see some of people in church and their lives has been driven by these winds. And I have a question. Could you please answer? If that is you under this storm and this wind are driving you, would you like to see things turn? Yes or no? If that's you that are going to illness, depression, divorce, despair, addiction, defeat, Would you like to see things turn for the better? Hmm? Would you like to see things to turn to, other, to another direction? Huh? To turn from sickness to health. From anxiety to peace. From depression to emotional wellness. From chaos to harmony. From despair to hope. The ship can turn regardless the winds that are trying to drive it. How do you turn the ship? How do you turn the ship of your life? How do you turn the direction of your, your life according to James? Answer me. How can you change the direction of your life according to James? Hmm? It's simple. Change your words. Speak right. <laughs> simple. Because your words is driving you. Because he said the tongue is the beating horse's mouth. And you can drive the horse whatever he wants. Right? Or he, he compared also your words as the pilot in the ship. And the pilot can control. If some areas of our, your life is not okay, what should you do? Turn the rudder. Turn the, the, the direction. If you are married, for example, if you are married, if your marriage is blown, is blown by the wind into the rocks of divorce, what do you have to do? Turn the rudder. <laughs> and then... Some of you may be, have been driven by demonic forces of worry, anxiety, and depression. Or onto the rocks of mental and physical breakdown. What should you do? Turn the ruler. Some people say, Pastor... <laughs> How can I turn the ruder? Are you with me? Some people say, Pastor, how can I turn the ruder? James said, by speaking. But some people say to me, Pastor, I will speak. I am healed when I see that I am healed. <laughs> yeah. I am speak that God supply all my needs. When I see the money in my bank account. But I spoke last time. That you were. All your words. 
should be linked for what you want to say. Because everything that you are speaking that are going to receive. And that's what James said for us. Just for you to understand if you are, you are thinking. Maybe you are saying, when I see that I am healed, then I'm going to start to declare I am healed. When I see that I have the document, I'm going to start thanking God because of my document. When I see that I have the house that I want, then I'm going to start talking, uh, thanking God because of the house. But just think, imagine with me, a massive ship being driven by strong winds. Massive ship with thousands of people driven by strong winds to the rocks and the pilot are doing nothing. <laughs> he is doing nothing. What should the pilot do? What should the pilot do? Turn the rudder. But he's saying, okay, I can do nothing. I'm going to, this is what, psh, this is what some of you are doing. You are in the trouble, you are suffering, you are under all this, this problem, and what you are doing? Pastor, I am waiting in God. Your ship is going to, against the rocks. And you are saying, God will do something. I am waiting on God. And your pastor can look at you and, shoot and say that your ship is going to be destroyed. And you are saying, God, you do something, pastor. And your pastor is saying to you, How? Turn the water! Change the wheel! Change the wheel! Because you are going to destroy yourself. And then, my beloved brothers, James said, James said, what do you speak can turn the direction of your life? And maybe you are reading, how many times did you read James? How many times? But what are you are saying? What are you speaking? Criticizing things. You are a shipwreck that's going to happen. Yeah. Turn the rudder and the ship will turn. Change what you are saying and your life will turn. Simple. What you are teaching, Pastor? Do you know what I'm teaching? For example, you find a promise in the Word of God. You find a promise, any promise, that God, that the Lord is your shepherd, that the Lord is your supplier, that the Lord is your healer. Any any promise in the Word of God, you find it. You fill your heart with the promise, and then you let your lips agree with this promise. And then you are going to speak aligned with God what God said. And there are many people, they come for me, pastor, pray for me. And then I pray for them, but they keep the same mistake. They don't change their words because I am always near to them. Or maybe, some, sometimes... You don't know and people come to me and say pastor that person said to me that that and that i said no no why because you are here one day worshiping the god and the another day you are speaking bad against people your word is destroying your life your word is destroying your ministry your word is destroying you and also your words are going to start destroying like a ship. If you don't turn the, the rudder, the wheel, everybody in your ship is going to die. It's easy 
what James said. We need just to read and to pay attention to put it in, into practice. If the winds are pushing your ship to the rocks, or if the horse is going to the cliff, for example, you are riding a horse, right? And your horse is going to the cliff. What are you going to do? Then you're going to say, okay, oh Lord, do something. <laughs> James said, what you say, that you, you are going to change the circumstance. I told you last time, Jesus, he never spoke what he saw. He spoke what he wanted to see. And maybe you are going to see Jesus is crazy. Yeah? Jesus spoke to a tree. <laughs> Jesus spoke to a tree. And the tree obeyed him. Jesus spoke to the winds. And the winds obeyed him. Jesus spoke to the waves. Obe waves obeyed him. Huh. One day, Jesus spoke to a fever. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. Peter's mother-in-law spoke to a fever, fever, and the fever obeyed the hand, but Jesus is speaking to you and you don't obey, even though demons obeyed Jesus, when Jesus looked to them and said, he used his word, get out, and they obeyed, are we obeying Jesus? Let's go to, let's read again verse, or, or I think we, don't, we didn't read verse 5 and 6. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts greater things, great things. See how great a forest a little fire candles and the tongue is a fire what is your tongue what is your tongue a fire a word of iniquity the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles what the whole body. Your tongue is destroying your whole body. And set on fire the curse of nature. <laughs> and this last part is terrible. What said? It is set on fire? Wow. First the tongue defiles the whole body. The whole body, all its desires, appetites, passion, weaknesses, are set on fire by what? By your tongue. And you can control every, all your body if you control your tongue. And he said that set on fire the curse of nature. It doesn't affect only your body, but it set on fire the whole nature. That literally means the totality of your existence can be destroyed. And I have seen believers playing with their tongues, always speaking jokes are speaking bad they, they don't care about their words it can set your whole life in fire your words will destroy your marriage your words will destroy your marriage your children your business your words will destroy your relationships your health in your spiritual life. 
Some people have burned down their marriage by the words they have spoken. I am, I am working with people and helping people. Always. The way that you speak are destroying your, your marriage. Some people have destroyed their ministry because of their criticism and gossip. You are destroying your spiritual life. Proverbs 18.21 says, let's read all together, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk Sorry, you are planting? <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> Those who, who are planting some kind of seeds, this is what I'm saying. Your words are the seeds of your destiny. And maybe your destiny are not going to be good, not because of God, because of you. Because you didn't take care of your tongue and you didn't give the right direction for your body. You allowed your body... You allowed your body to do everything he want. Can you imagine? You, you are riding a horse and you, are, and you allow the horse to go wherever he wants. Can you imagine? It's going to be very fun, isn't it? <laughs> going to be very fun. You, you on the top of the horse say, okay, you go wherever you want. When you allow your body, all your desires... Sometimes you have some desire to do bad things. You know what I'm speaking. Sometimes you, you're going to be tempted to go to your phone, your computer, and, and to enter in some areas that you, are, you shouldn't go. And then and you allow your horse to go wherever he wants. Your words are seeds of your destiny. Be aware of your words. Be aware of your comments. Not only your words. When you, to go, when, when you are going to speak about someone, pay attention. Be aware of your criticism. Be aware of your jokes. Because you, you reap the consequences of your words. This is what this verse said. You are going to reap the consequence of your words. And verse 6, I want to read it again. Verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and set on fire the curse of nature. And I'm going to speak now about this last part and it is set on fire by it's set on fire by hell what <laughs> what does this mean he said that your tongue is set on fire by hell what does it mean? The devil is after your tongue. The devil is after your tongue. Satan wants to inspire your spirit. Satan wants to inspire you and say, Yes, go and speak against her. Go and speak against him. Yes, you are right. You, you... You have the power, you are the best, you know. Go and talk against her. Go and say bad words to your husband. Go and say yes. And then you say, oh yes. <laughs> Satan wants to inspire your speech. Because even though if you don't know, even though you don't know the power of your words, he does. If you don't know how powerful is your words, he does. He knows. 
Jesus is giving us some insight into spiritual welfare, how it works. And I want to read now 2 Corinthians. And now I'm going to put the cherry in the top of the cake, okay? If you don't get that, you are lost. Please, be connected with me. Because I told you that you have to control what? Your, your, your mouth, your tongue. But your words, your mouth, your tongue, and your words. But now I'm going to give you how it works. And there is one spiritual welfare. Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according. Even though you have a body, you cannot fight with your body. And what happens, some people, they are fighting with her, their husband, their wife, their brother, their sister, their leader, their boss. No! You are fighting against the wrong person. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing what? Every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Wow. <laughs> Here's the point. This is talking about spiritual war warfare. The battleground of the ages is the human mind. All the battle, all your battles is your mind. And the way the devil works, even though if you don't believe in him, no problem. <laughs> but <laughs> he, he, he likes, if you don't believe in him, he, this is what he likes. But the way the devil works is to bring you suggestion, a thought that is contrary to the knowledge of God. Are you with me? How, how the devil works? What he's going to do? To bring you some suggestion. <laughs> do you know when you are angry and then comes some you have some suggestion in your mind. <laughs> or maybe you are alone and you have some suggestion in your mind. <laughs> I don't want to scare you, but it's Satan. <laughs> That's saying, giving you some suggestion, thoughts that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and the Word of God. And what you need to do? We need to capture our thoughts. Or you, you, when you have something in mind, you need to take hold of them and ask, wait a minute, where did, did this thought come from? Where? If it's not from God, it's from whom? Satan. From Satan. And you are receiving thoughts, ideas. Then you have to ask, what's the origin of this thought? Is it consistent? For example, what you are speaking, is it consistent to the word of God? This is what the Bible says for, for you to do? To speak on the other people's back? Or to talk in a, not in a nice way, not a polite way? Is it right? Is it consistent with the scripture? Maybe your thought have to do with the way that you are raising your children. There are people, they come to church, but they say, no, pastor, I know how to deal with my children. <laughs> Everything that I knew that I received from my parents, I had to change in order to obey the word of God. And also maybe you have some strange doctrines in your mind. This is what I have seen. People come to church, 
but they have strange actions. Sometimes your lead, your pastor speak to you and say, no, 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 this is the way that I am pastor. Do you know what is that stronghold? That you receive some thoughts or wrong teachings, and then you have that in your mind, and you need to break down these strongholds. And we need to take that thought captive. And if you give it room in your thinking, what happens? It escalates to uh, and has one progression and becomes one argument. Did you get I did you get what I said to you? Are you with me? If you re, if you receive one thought from Satan and you don't bring it captive and say this is not from God do you know what are going to happen this thought are going to become one argument and what is an argument I have no time to go deeply that but argument is the Greek word logismus it's a fallacy a lie that you seems like truth you think that's true, but it's a lie. But you received one thought. You don't accept any guidance to help you. Then you have this argument. And if you don't care about this argument, this argument are go is going to escalate and are going to become what? A stronghold. If you read it your, read your at home, please, these verses. This, he's speaking about your thoughts that you have to bring in, into captivity. If not, it's escalate. And then it's going to become a stronghold. The arguments are going to become a stronghold. And you know, and you know what stronghold? Stronghold is the Greek word okshur, okshuruma. It's a castle. It's like a castle, protection, or reasoning by which a person strives to fortify his opinion and to defend it against the opponent. When you have one stronghold here, then it's a position from which the enemy are going to work in your life. And Paul the Apostle said, Ephesians 6.11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil are strategies, my brothers. Tactics of the devil. And the verse 16 speaks about the most important. I'm going to read now. Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with, with which you be able to quench what? The fiery darts of the wicked one. I like the GNIT version that says, All time carry the faiths as a shield, for with it you be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one. What kind of darts, beloved brothers, or fairy darts, burning arrows? What are the fairy darts of the wicked one? What is the strategy of Satan? The darts of Satan are thoughts and suggestions that are contrary to the word of God. And I have constantly, I have seen it constantly in the church. People have one idea and they think they are right. And they go using their words to speak what they believe. And then you have to go after fixing their, the problems. Because they have one thing in mind, different, and, and go 
talking to everybody using their tongue not in a proper way and also criticizing things, criticizing brothers, criticizing sisters, criticizing leaders, criticizing their spouse, their church, their company, and they are sowing seeds that only will destroy their lives. If you don't take your thought captive and get rid of it, it will grow into an argument. And from there, you become one stronghold. One thought, one suggestion. Then it's going to become an argument that it's a lie and you are going to believe. And then, one stronghold. Then you are, it's so hard to break down stronghold. And ultimately, that is what the devil is after. He wants your tongue to be set on fire by hell. This verse is so strong. And all it starts with what? One thought that you receive. You believed and you start speaking. The devil wants your tongue. The devil wants your tongue, but God also wants your tongue as well. Amen? Amen. And you have to use your tongue by God. And I want to read the last verse, verse 19. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen. quick to listen. quick to listen and <coughs> slow to speak uh, and also slow to get angry. Blood brothers, here he's speaking. Be quick to listen and slow to to speak God gave you two ear and one tongue what that means you have to you have to listen twice before you speak once Amen. yeah but I am always helping people you know I am always counseling people. I am always trying to help people. Do you know the hardest thing for me? People don't like listening. This is terrible. He said, for us to be quick to listen, or speak, speak. But what is terrible? Sometimes you say, hey! And we are talking to someone. Are you with me? Okay. Sometimes I am talking to someone face to face. And I am talking to them and they are paying no attention to me. Why? Why they are not paying attention to me? Because they are thinking what they are going to to say me back. This is so terrible. Or people don't listen. I am teaching them, I am calling their attention, and they are preparing their excuses to answer me back. Yeah. God gave you two ears and one tongue. Think twice before you speak. Amen? Because people they always they want to speak and give their excuses and they are preparing say no pastor this is not what i mean they want to give their excuse but it's so beautiful when people say pastor i'm sorry i'm going to get better i'm going to improve sorry it's my mistake this is so beautiful isn't it it's so beautiful but people don't want to listen anymore 
Don't you speak? He said, no, no, it's not my mistake, not my fault. Always excuses, excuse. But what you should say? It's a lack of humility. Lack of humility. Sometimes I have said sorry to my children, my daughters. What's the problem? Sometimes I do wrong things. I say sorry, I did wrong. Sometimes I say sorry to Fabiana. But people, you call their attention, they are thinking. Sometimes I, I stop and say, are you listening to me? Because they are preparing what they're going to say. Because they don't want to listen. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak. But we want to justify our mistakes. And may the Holy Spirit help us with His power to glorify God with our mouth and be careful with all your words because your words are seeds that are going to influence your destiny for good or for better. Let's stand up, please, for us to pray. I have a question. Don't move now. But I have a question to you. What does God spoke to you? What did God speak to you today? Mm -hmm. Your words are the seeds of your future. But your words is not only words. Because your mouth speak what? <laughs> then you receive a thought and this thought enters inside of you and become what you believe then you start speaking and if you believe in the wrong things this argument that's fake you are in trouble and then you are going to be disobedient speaking, going against the Bible because the Bible says don't do that but you keep going and you are destroying your life please turn the ruder <laughs> Turn the beat of the horse because you need to be in control. Close your eyes, please.